Hi, my name is Link. I was a pharmacist and an independent pharmacy owner for many years. And somewhere in the middle 1980s, I started to realize that the healthcare industry was beginning to shift from patient care <clears throat> to making money. And as the years went on, it became less fun for me and my profession wasn't as rewarding as it was originally. I made the decision in 2004 to sell my pharmacy. And fortunately, at the same time, my music was really banging to get out into the world. And so this made it possible for me to be able to pursue music in, in a much more full-time way. I uh, turned the space into a bookstore, Cyber Cafe. We have cards and gifts and a retro soda fountain because I wanted to stay in touch with the community. So that's what I do when I'm not playing my guitar and writing music. If it's a nice day and I have some free time, I love to take my dog out for a hike. I live in the country. I have a lot of wildlife around me and I really enjoy just being out there and, and enjoying all of the scenery and the wildlife. I have a horse. I've had horses since I was a freshman in high school, and sometimes I, I work with my horse. I love to read, and that's why I turned my space into a bookstore. I'm an avid reader. Um, I read a lot of different things from biographies to mysteries, and I really have a good time at that. There was always music on in my house. My parents were music lovers. Um, as I grew old enough to start developing my own taste in music, I loved artists like the Everly Brothers. My cousin and I used to harmonize together. We, when we were in junior high school, we were gonna grow up and call ourselves the cousins, but that never happened. <laughs> and uh, once I got into college, I just was really infatuated with the whole music scene from Bob Dylan, Joan Baez, Janis Joplin. I saw Led Zeppelin when they came to the country for the first time. I still have that first album on vinyl that I bought the night of their show in Boston. Um, I just really um, needed to do the music. And I had taken some piano lessons as a child. So when I was in college, I bought myself a guitar I'm left-handed, so I had it restrung. It was just a nylon uh, acoustic classical guitar. Bought myself a chord book and used my background that I'd had playing piano and also singing in chorus during school uh, to learn how to play the guitar. And I just continued from there. And I had played for myself for years and for friends here and there. But I didn't seriously jump on stage until December of 2002, when I, I just had an urgency that I, I needed to share this music before I died. And the rest is history. I've been recording and out there uh, singing and doing my thing ever since. I have a son. He's in his middle 30s. He is an electromechanical engineer, and he lives out in Colorado. I was married for a few years back. I got married right out of college. And uh, that was back when I was naive enough to think that I had to live my life the way society expected me to. Um, and uh, so it was very freeing after the marriage got over and I was able to come into my own, find myself, and live an honest life as a lesbian. I'm a social justice activist, and when I write my music, it's usually from some kind of an emotional space. I've had the um, opportunity to work with some really important people within the GLBT community. I, as a resident in Massachusetts, I worked very hard behind the scenes for marriage equality here in the state. And because of that activity, I had the opportunity to work with people like uh, Attorney Mary Bernardo from GLAAD, uh, and also Gary Busick, Ben Klein, uh, who were instrumental in bringing marriage equality to the state. I get to work with um, 
great people like Marty Rouse, Mark Solomon, Scott Gordikov, through my association with Mass Equality, doing the groundwork to um, educate people, to tell our stories so that they, they realized that gay people had um, the same interests and um, did really basically the same things as they did. So we basically became visible. We put ourselves out um, as living examples. And it, it, it was, has been very exciting. I've had the opportunity to, to meet and, and have conversations with Kate Kendall from NCLR, that's National Center for Lesbian Rights. Um, they're doing phenomenal work throughout the country too. Don't You Understand was written during the firestorm that was happening at the State House in Boston uh, when we were fighting so hard for our equal rights. Our gay eyes, they are crying from the words used as weapons of hate. Our gay minds, they are reeling from the tone of the public debate. And I wrote that song directly after watching um, the demonstrations on the State House steps with um, so-called people of faith holding these nasty signs and yelling these hateful, hateful things, and then looking across the street at the lesbian couples holding each other crying, and it just really impressed me that this is about justice for all, and that's what that song is about. I've been very actively involved um, with the new anti-bullying legislation that just came um, into being effective January 1st of this year, the state passed one of the most comprehensive anti-bullying laws in the country. And I worked with uh, the local school system a little bit, uh, giving some input as they were putting together the, the so-called nuts and bolts of, the, um, of their uh, plan that had to be submitted to the state. Uh, the song itself came from uh, suicides that were happening in Massachusetts. Uh, Carl Walker Hoover um, hung himself back in uh, 2009. Phoebe Prince, uh, she uh, killed herself the next year in 2010. And again, I'm an emotional writer. And so, um, Oh Bully was, came to me quite easily. Um, as a way to um, address the issue and also to speak to maybe the bullies and the gangs that might not really be thinking about consequences. And I, I, I try to tie consequences into the, the last verse. And the kids in the gang come over and hang at the edge of the sidewalk to try and catch a glimpse of the ghost that will haunt them for the rest of their lives. The activism is my other passion, really, um, and, and being a part of the community. That's why I started the bookstore rather than just um, taking the money and running. After I sold the pharmacy, I wanted to remain in touch with the community. I've been involved with the community. I think it's important that we all uh, give back to our communities. I was on the board of directors of the local chamber of commerce for 25 years. I'm currently on the board of directors of the 1794 Meeting House, which is a performing arts venue. I serve as the chairperson of the program committee and the publicity committee this year. And it's my way of being involved uh, because the, the venues are really important for us musicians. If, if there aren't people there keeping the venues alive, then musicians have no places to play. So that's part of what I'm, my, my goal is there to keep music alive in our area and to give artists a chance to perform. I hope that I can be an example to people that are, are not sure if they should get into music if they think they might be too old. I didn't jump on stage for the first time until I was 55. Um, but it was important to me, and uh, I can just say from experience, it's never too late to really follow 
your music as a passion, as a, as a business, as a, uh, a way of living.